Okay guys, Jay Bradley here from the Craft Whiskey Boys. Guys, I'm gonna give you a quick crash course on what they don't tell you on a whiskey label. You've got a 12 year old American Eagle and a 12 year old Highland Park. Well, number one, this is a bourbon, so it's a completely different mash bill, and this is a single malt. But even if they were both single malts and one was made in Kentucky where this is made down here, and the other one's made up here, if they're in the exact same cast, exact same spirit, when they're 12 years old, they're gonna be vastly different whiskeys, purely based just on the geographical location, the maturation period because of the heat. So I'll explain it in a bit more detail. So when you're buying a whiskey, don't just listen to someone and go, oh, get a 25 year old, it's really, really good. Well, a 25 year old American whiskey is not gonna be really, really good. It's gonna be really, really bad. Versus a 25 year old Scottish whiskey can be really, really good, can be depending on it. So there's a few things to take into account. Number one, let's just talk about the type of spirit. So in other words, what's the mash bill? What, what is it? Is it a single malt, i.e. malted whiskey made from one distillery? Is it a pot sill, like an Irish style whiskey, which, uh, which is kind of akin to Ireland? Is it a bourbon, which is about 51% corn? A uh, completely different mash bill. So let's just use, for the exercise here, let's just use malt. Single malt, whether it be Irish, Scottish, even American, Japanese, it doesn't matter. Now, when they're mature in that whiskey, they're gonna, they're gonna make a decision on what type of cask to use. And as you can see here, there's a lot of options, right? There's, you know, the Firkin, which is only 40 liters. There's the standard which everybody uses, which is this one here, right? And that's the barrel, they're calling it the barrel here. That's basically your American bourbon barrel, 200 liters. That's pretty much the bulk standard of what most Irish and Scottish and Japanese is matured in. Uh, matured in, not finished in. So maturation is where it goes in when it's new make, then it comes out towards the end of its life and gets finished in something else. But from a maturation standpoint, this is kind of the gold standard. Hogshead, it's staying here is 300 liters. It's actually around 225 to 300. Um, you got your sherry butts that are 500 liters. So the reason why I tell you this is whiskey, in a 200 liter barrel is going to mature much quicker than whiskey that's stored in a 500 liter sherry butt. That's gonna take a lot longer. So if something comes out and there's a 12 year old that's been sitting in sherry its whole life, or a 12 year old that's been sitting in a normal bourbon barrel its whole life, the bourbon barrel is gonna be far more mature than this because of the wood to ratio, the spirit to wood ratio. Versus if it was matured in a quarter cask, well a quarter cask is gonna mature it even quicker than this. And then when you take that type of barrel, i.e. the size of it, then you've got to look at, well, what type of barrel usage was it? Was it, is it a virgin oak barrel, meaning it's never had anything in it before? Is it a first fill, which is what we tend to use. That means American whiskey's already been in it, a first fill bourbon, and now it's come over to Ireland or Scotland and we're putting Irish whiskey or Scottish whiskey in it for the first time. That's about your best because the American bourbon, that bourbon, that satin has taken out a lot of the, uh, a lot of the oaky, woody profiles and kind of giving us a nice, perfect maturation style barrel. Second fill is gonna have a lot of stuff stripped out of it, so you're gonna get more spirit influence from that, and third fill even more again. So theoretically, you could have, it's, some people say, and I, I, I've even said it on camera before, about 80% of a whiskey's flavor comes from the barrel. That's true in the case when I was speaking on camera, I was talking about the Devil's Keep and I knew the maturation times for that, but that's not the case in all scenarios, you take a three-year-old Irish whiskey that was sitting in a third fill bourbon barrel for only three years, it's now legally Irish whiskey, that's gonna be 80, 90% spirit. There's gonna be very little uh, barrel influence on that because it's a third fill. If it was sitting in a virgin oak barrel, it's gonna have way more barrel influence. So on the scale here determines how much of the oaky, buttery, beautiful flavors that come off the barrel happen. Here, is gonna determine how long it needs to stay in the barrel, the maturation period. So there's a few things, and then you've got the geographical location. This is really important. So here is where most bourbons are done, in Kentucky, Tennessee, kind of Jack Daniels, down this area of America. Say the equator's around this area here. The closer to the equator, obviously the hotter the, the temperate climates are, the more it's gonna go in and out of the barrel, the deeper the wood flavor, the deeper the influence the barrel's gonna give it, the faster it's gonna mature. For example, a whiskey in Israel, which is some really cool whiskey being made there at the moment, one company, Milk and Honey, shout out to them. They will mature what would take 10 years in Ireland, they can do in two years. Now, is that better or worse? I would say it's probably worse in a sense that sometimes you can make it all happen too fast and the heat 
Sometimes you just need to let time do its job and you want to be in a temperate climate. You don't really want to be in an ultra hot climate because that ultra, ultra heat gives off way too much of the barrel in too short a space of time. The barrel and the fuselage and didn't have enough time to interact with the spirit and really just get a very, very heavily oaked bourbon style drink when you give it a bit more time in the likes of Ireland or Scotland then it's going to have that longevity, kind of like this akin to barbecue, right? You got the slow and low. Okay, so let's just take, for example, you've got this Lagavulin here, 16 year old. Now we have to talk about double and triple distilling a whiskey because this is a double distilled whiskey. An Irish whiskey, for example, this seven year old is triple distilled. Now, when you triple distill a whiskey, you're taking the heart of hearts and heart of hearts again. Whereas when you're double distilling, you're what happens is in whiskey is you'll get this, the, the heads and you'll get the tails. You don't want either, you want the heart in the middle. And then they take that heart and then they redistill it. And then you get rid of the heads and you get rid of the tails and then you do it one more time. In Irish whiskey, we do that an extra time, which obviously gives us less produce, less production, but a much more, a much more rounded spirit. So it's already done. The spirit going into an Irish whiskey barrel or not an Irish whiskey barrel, but an Irish spirit going into one of these barrels is already gonna have a head start on a harsher Scotch whiskey. Scotland is also up higher on the, ge on the I guess on the, uh, on the geographical scale than Ireland. So what you're gonna have is it's gonna take longer. So this 16 year old, it's kind of a smoky profile. You can't really compare it to an Irish whiskey. It's gonna be closer to like a eight, nine year old Irish whiskey, 10 year old Irish whiskey. It's gonna be different maturations. So to, to look at an Irish whiskey that might only be eight years old, or nine years old and go, oh, it's only eight or nine years old. I'd rather a 16 year old Scotch. I said, well, actually, you don't know how that's, if it says 16 year old, what was it matured in? Was it matured in a barrel? Was it matured in a hogshead, which a lot of the times it is in Scotland, or maybe bigger a butt or a port pipe? So you could take two single malts. We're talking about the same spirit again. We're not talking about pot still versus single malt or completely different spirits. Two single malts made in the exact same distillery. Let's just say it's made here in the middle of Ireland, both put into barrels. One sent up the north for 12 years, one sent down the south for 12 years, one of them put at the top of the warehouse, one of them put at the bottom of the warehouse. So keep that in mind, just because it says it's 12 years old or 20 years old or whatever, you've got to understand where was it matured. This here, this 12 year old American Eagle is very, very similar in age because of where it was matured. Now they're completely different spirits. This is obviously a single malt and this is bourbon, so they're going to taste nothing alike anyway. But from an age perspective, a 12 year old bourbon is gonna be similar to a 25 year old scotch. So again, it's not always about the age. Everyone gets caught up in the fucking age. It's like, oh, I only drink 12 year old. I don't drink anything younger than 12 year old. It's like, okay, well, what about if it was an American bourbon? You should be drinking something younger than 12. 12 is probably a little bit too old for an American bourbon. All right, for bourbon, I think it's too old. If you were drinking whiskey from Israel, you're drinking 12 year old stuff there, it's gonna be way too old. 12 year old stuff in Ireland is about on point perfect. The 12 year old Red Breast is probably one of the best whiskies on earth. It's definitely better than the 15 and the 21 year old in my opinion. Other people claim different probably because of age statement. They're like, oh, the, did you ever try the 21 year old Red Breast that won second best whiskey in the world by Jim Murray? I'm like, well, honestly, the 12 year old is better. That's it. And it's cheaper, which is always nice. So that is a video on how to, I guess, read a whiskey label, how to know what an age statement really is and what it truly means. So if you liked the video, please smash the like button, please subscribe, that'd be great. And look, if you have any questions, hit some comments below. We're happy to answer all questions. I love to interact, love to get to know our people a little bit more that are watching these videos and give you guys what you're looking for.